Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this beautiful wiring mess here is my dad's Kawasaki 220 four-wheeler. It's supposed to look like this guy. As you can see, it's far from it. We have uh, a wiring mess here, like most four-wheelers that are older, that someone's cut into and modified and changed and cut stuff out so the electric start didn't work, uh, none of the lights worked, and uh, it was just a big mess when he got it. It did run, believe it or not, but you had to use this awesome wooden pull handle, which this thing's got a little bit of a kick to it, so it wants to pull this thing out of your hand. So if you can avoid it, you want to avoid it. Today, we're going to work on fixing all this wiring up, try to get the, the electric start to work, and see if we can't make this baby run again. Stay tuned, I'll show you what we're going to get into. If you follow along on Instagram, you'll know that this four-wheeler was at the Flat Thunder Garage a couple months ago. And at that point in time, I helped Dad quickly get the electric start working so it would work with the button. Uh, it would start and it would turn off. But it wasn't the way it should have been. Uh, none of the lights would work, the neutral safety switch wouldn't work. So he bought this manual so we can take a look at the wiring diagram and fix it correctly. Previously, we were just poking and probing wires with our multimeter to try to figure out what was what. And it's a little bit difficult without a wiring diagram. Couldn't tell from back there. I mean, there's, we got some wire nuts here. Uh, I got some alligator uh, clips and wires. We got a hole pile of alligator clip wire so you can do some probing got my multimeter we'll do some probing with that and we're going to tie into this thing and see if we can't fix this all up he bought a new uh starter re uh, relay or starter solenoid and he also bought a new pet cock valve because this one was not working correctly i don't know if it was jammed up or just uh old and corroded but it wasn't consistently feeding fuel to the carburetor so we're going to replace that uh, and then we'll test the wiring as we have it so far i think we got to figure it out all with the exception of the neutral safety switch which i believe is this guy right here and we're missing a regulator in a minute i'll take you down to the wiring diagram and show you what i'm looking at Now we're gonna go uh, drain all the old, drain all the old fuel out of this uh, gas tank because it's probably rotten, and then we'll come back and swap out this uh, petcock. Sweet a train. I think he might have been onto something uh, when I tried to drain this. Uh, nothing was coming out. Oh, it looks like it has a uh, reserve pickup and then a regular pickup. Nothing was coming out of this when I turned it on. Here's the replacement. It looks like it's got a little bit different ratio from... That's a, probably your... Piece of crap just went by. This is probably your uh, regular pickup here. And then this would be your reserve pickup here. And this one... It's definitely different. It has the regular pickup quite a bit lower. And then obviously the reserve, <clears throat> the reserve pickup goes all the way down. Not for sure why that wouldn't go all the way down. Maybe this one's wrong, I don't know. Those couple drips that splashed out it's probably cost me about five dollars of the way fuel prices are now. Times like this where you really want to have one of those gas caddies where you have electric pump or just a hand crank. I'm threatened to buy one for several years. I may or may not get one this year. We'll see. It's a moment of truth. We got the wiring 
arranged such that we can try to start it with the electric start. The neutral lights work. Put the new pet cack on. We got the fuel in. We're going to see what she's going to do. I better turn the fuel on first. It's on. We'll put it on reserve since it has such a small amount in there. Locate our key. Neutral lights on. See what she's gonna do. Whoa, I think it might work. Just noticed the boot on the intake on the carburetors loose. He must have taken it off to clean the carburetor at one point in time and didn't tighten it back up. Got to tighten that up and then we'll try to start her again. We got it on there better than it was. I'm not 100% happy with it, but the trick was loosen everything up, loosen up the air cleaner boxes, get the bolts for the air cleaner box, slide the air cleaner back, and then try to situate these boots where they need to be. So you can see I'm still a little hanging off the back of the carburetor here and I'm not overly happy with that I think maybe this boot shrunk up a little bit over the years maybe we need a new boot or maybe the air cleaner needs to come forward but uh, it's on fixed tabs so that kind of surprised me maybe the frame itself just tweaked a little bit but we'll we'll try it out with that and see how it works I did notice we got a little bit of a gas leak here with this little flimsy spring clamp so we need a better one there probably just gonna put a zip tie on that for now to expedite the ignition testing good it starts it runs uh, it'll sit there and idle so that's a good sign uh, the only thing that you'll just notice that I tried uh, when it goes into reverse the red light on the dash does not come on to indicate that it's in reverse and then also you can start it in any gear so the reverse light eh, I'm not overly concerned about but being able to start it in gear I think he wants to repair that for safety this is the wiring diagram that was supplied in the maintenance manual that dad received and it leaves a lot to be desired I don't know how well this is going to turn out on camera but right here this is the starter solenoid block and here is the main fuse it's a 20 amp fuse that connects battery power to the white wire. But it also has a B, which I believe stands for blue in this wiring diagram, and a brown wire. And it doesn't show how those terminate. Now if you go over here, this little block right up here is the starter circuit relay. It has a green wire, a brown wire, and two blue wires, I believe, going to it. But it doesn't show anything inside here, so I don't know I don't know what's switching on this and what's the switching power and you know where the switches go. So this and this guy down here confuse me. It's just a magic box. I mean I understand how a relay works, so I mean, you can kinda guess, but Again, it's just a magic box that 
you know, you have to figure out which wires connect to which wires and which wires the power on the ground for the relay. So this part I believe is missing on our four wheeler. Um, you can start the four wheeler, which let's see here. Where is the starter motor? The starter motor is here. And the power comes from this starter solenoid over here. Let's see, here's the starter button. So this blue wire goes up here to this starter circuit relay and then it comes out of here and goes down to the starter solenoid. So we need to set up this relay such that when it's in gear, this blue wire is broken which we can do with that green wire. Here's it says green, but we'll take you over and show you that loose green wire. It is in neutral now. Yeah, it's reading some residual voltage that's picking up somewhere. So let's shift it into first gear. Neutral light went off. We have batter, full battery voltage, 12.8 volts. Now we're in reverse because the turn button is still energized. It needs a new return spring down there. But now we're in reverse and it's still reading uh, full battery voltage. Let's try to catch neutral. Okay, we're on neutral. And like I said, we just got some weird residual voltage there. So this should be a ground whenever it is in neutral. It's got some resistance there. It's probably gone through the switch still yet. That's how we're going to set it up. We're going to try to use this uh, green wire because it's hot whenever the four-wheeler is in reverse or if it's in any forward gear. So we'll use this to open the circuit uh, whenever this is hot. Well, this is, this needs to be a ground. Aye, it works so much better if this was just... I'm gonna set it up this way. We're gonna set it up such that this hot leg of this wire, because that's what makes the most sense to me, when this is hot, it's going to open the circuit and otherwise the blue starting wire, which is this guy right here, Otherwise, this will be connected to itself, but when this is hot, it'll open the circuit. My relay here, this is one that I cut off another project or an old project, so I already had a couple of wires made up with some ends crimped on them, and basically just a pigtail. So any 12 volt, you know, regular car relay will work for this. And I have this wire hooked up to my green wire with this yellow jumper on this side, and then I have this other guy here hooked up to hot power uh, all the time which we'll probably have to switch that so it's just key on power but this is going to be our test so right now uh, I'm not for sure what the pretty sure it's in neutral so right now when it's in neutral with this on hot this connected to the green as long as the green is given a good enough ground, this should make this relay closed and connect the red and the brown wires. I'm going to turn the key on. Listen for it. It's in neutral. Oh, my power wire fell off. You can hear it clicking around with that power wire on. I think actually this needs to be connected so it doesn't drain the battery. 
needs to be connected to this brown leg. That's only key on that's only key on power. So that it's in neutral now. This is closed. And then we'll connect these two wires to our starter button, which is this blue wire here. So when I push it in gear, it should click, should hear it click, and it will open these two circuits. It just clicked, and these two circuits will be open. It's in reverse now, so we'll go. There's neutral. It's uh, closed again because the relay is energized. We'll go to the first gear. And it uh, open the relay so these two legs won't be connected. So now all we got to do is connect our break our starter re, uh, button switch wire, this blue wire, and put it um, uh, in between this so the re it has to go through the relay. This is the part that's missing uh, from this system. Once we add this back in, everything should work right. Took my soldering iron and soldered all the connections in. That way all these splices down here and joints down here where there were, you know, wire nuts and then there were some uh, crimp connectors. It's now all soldered in. So this yellow wire goes to the uh, black and yellow that's a ground. The white wire uh, goes to this white wire that was on there originally. That's just soldered in. They have two white going to this single. And then the brown wire I didn't have brown, so it goes to this red wire. The dark blue wire goes to this lighter blue wire, and the green wire goes to this green wire. You notice we also put the fenders back on because these wires have to run up through a hole in the frame and also a hole in the fender. So we're going to get these all tucked back up in there, and then we'll make our connections to the relay in the battery box hole. Got all the wires, they're not necessarily tidied up as good as I'd like them to be. Uh, he needs to get all the front fenders and the gas tank mounted and uh, figure out where everything needs to be tucked up all nice and neat. I don't have those. He's going to do that when he gets it back. So we got the rear fenders on. We got the starter solenoid wired up. We got the new relay put in place. Let's test it out and see if it works. If it works the way it should, it shouldn't start or try to start when it's in reverse and or when it's in any forward gear. But when it's in neutral, she should start, try to start and fire up. Let's see what's gonna happen. We got the key on, we got the green light, so that's, that means we're in neutral. Let's test the start. Sounds like she's gonna do it. Let's put it in uh, first gear. Okay, she's in first gear now. Nothing on the start button. Back to neutral, the green light's on. Oh yeah! Try reverse. Definitely in reverse. Alright, let's see if she'll start in reverse. Nothing on the start switch. I think we're winning there. Back to neutral. Yeah! First gear. Off with the kill switch. Try to start again. Nothing. go four-wheeling. This baby's fixed and it's safe. Took a little bit of the farmer out of it. Woo-hoo-hoo! Gotta quit messing around on the trailer. What's up of the finished product? Here's the battery bay, the little battery. Here's the hole that all the wires had to go through. Here's the starter solenoid and then the relay that we added.
basically the relay is the safety that breaks the starter button uh, circuit unless it's in neutral so if you want to look at this guy see if I can get it to stay this re this starter solenoid this white is hot with the fuse this blue here the blue the white is hot with the fuse the blue wire is the starter circuit that goes through the relay and the black wire is just the ground so the ground is uh obviously grounded all the time the blue is hot just in the start bus button is pushed and this white wire is hot all the time through this fuse then we already went over the how this works uh, it basically breaks this blue start circuit wire unless it's in neutral so this was the missing link right here it needed a relay and a universal relay would work just fine tuck all that in there actually I forgot to mention this right here uh, where the terminals just go into there I'm going to recommend that he fills that complete with completely with silicone once he has everything finalized and he knows he doesn't have to unplug it again just to prevent shorting Tuck all that in there, all, all nice and neat. Pop the seat back on, the front fenders. He's ready to do some wheeling. Right on. We got her fixed. The climber manual helped, but that wiring diagram wasn't so good. You got those magic boxes with wires going into it and you gotta kinda figure it out yourself. The real winner here was the multimeter. Use the wiring diagram a little bit, but just basically probe the wires until we got what we wanted. We needed to add in that uh, relay that was missing. The original owner, before Dad purchased it, the relay probably went bad and it wouldn't start anymore and he started cutting on wires and adding and moving stuff and ultimately never ended up fixing it. So, I think it's back to the way it should be. Right on. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, leave your questions and comments in that section below, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everyone.